So you know those times that you swear your children have selective hearing and they are just muting you out? Well, guess what? They actually are. So stay tuned in this sound bite to find out why and what you can do about it. Hi, I'm Lori Cunningham, music health coach. And today in this sound bite video, we are going to explore why it is that we can mute out certain sounds. When you can't tolerate a certain sound anymore, and that doesn't sound very good as a parent, right? But when you can't tolerate your cer a certain sound anymore, you actually start tuning out or muting out that frequency in your middle ear. And it's something that, that has been proven that people actually do. So that's why you can tune out certain sounds like train that goes by. You know, we live by train tracks and I swear when we were very first moved in, I could hear every single train that, that went by, but now, you know, if they're really noisy, yeah, I notice it, but otherwise it's like, it's just a train or, you know, dogs barking next door or whatever you just, you don't notice it as much as you used to. And this is why when you swear that your kids can't hear you, that they have selective hearing, that's actually what they've done. They have muted out your voice. There are certain times that we actually want to be able to mute things out, but there are other times such as as a parent giving instructions that you don't want to be muted out. You don't want to have that ability or have that ability being used, right? And it's not a desirable thing. Plus, Plus, it actually has a negative impact on your long-term hearing. By subconsciously muting out frequencies, it makes it so that you are more susceptible to hearing loss in the future. And besides the obvious negative effects of hearing loss, here's a few other things that happen when you have a hearing loss. It actually, it affects your your nervous system, it affects your nervous system negatively. It doesn't work as well. And you have muddled thinking. You're not able to think as clearly because you can't hear as clearly. It's interesting how that works. And also you can't balance out your emotions as well. You have more out of control emotions. So taking it back to our kids, our children, you don't want to encourage them muting out sounds and obviously you don't want them to mute you out, right? So here's a few a few fun things that you can do to prevent this from happening. Number one is you can talk to them in different pitches. So meaning you can talk to them really low or you can talk to them really high. <laughs> you should see the look on my kids' faces when I start doing that. They think it's the funniest thing ever, but they pay attention. So don't always talk in the same tone, the, the same pitch and same tone, so that they won't mute you out all the time. Another thing that you can do is to whisper. People pay attention when you whisper. So you wanna to whisper to them because they'll, they'll sit up and they'll pay attention more because you don't want them to start muting you out. And then you can sing, like, please go do the dishes, you know, whatever. <laughs> I did that with the na 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 sound, but, um, or the tune. But you can sing to them. Children are naturally drawn in, well, everyone's naturally drawn into singing, but children especially, it draws their attention. They sit up and they take attention and it helps them learn better and it makes things fun and it gets them involved. Sing, children love to sing. They're not inhibited by the fact that they can't sing. Everybody can sing. So, sing to them. Leave in the comments below ways that you have found that's helping your children to sit up and pay attention to you and not, not tune you out. And I will see you in the next sound bite video. Bye.